What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Rad BMX Builds. I'm Sean, the owner, and this episode is going to be pretty rad. But before we jump right into it, I need to tell you, September 20th through the 22nd is the BMX Hall of Fame induction ceremony in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We're going to be there filming the bike race, the event, the show, the swap meet, all of that, just like last year. And the bonus is we're bringing back the Radical Rick bike. That's right. The bike I built last year that's been at the BMX Hall of Fame for a year now is coming back here to the shop. The display, the bike, all of that set up right here. Pretty excited about that. Okay, this video, what are we doing? We're working on a 1983 Diamondback Silver Streak. That's right. So what we need to do before we get into the build is peel off the old stickers, polish up the chrome a little bit. It's in great shape, but I always want to at least polish up a little bit while the decals are off, re-decal the bike, and essentially put it all together. This bike's really rad. Chrome and blue is some of my favorite color combinations. I think you're really gonna like it. Let's check out the parts. All right, this beautiful chrome Diamondback Silver Streak was located on eBay. I bought it, it came here to the shop, and I started amassing parts. So it's a loop tail, it's a silver streak, not a Viper. The Viper has the chain guard tabs on the bike, and honestly, I just I don't care for those whatsoever. The Viper is kind of the low end Diamondbacks. This is a little bit of the higher end, they have a Pro. Uh, of course, they have the Harry Leary Turbo, rest in peace, Harry. And this one also has the diamond cutouts and the fork dropouts, which is really cool. Um, came with a headset, but we're going to be taking that off, and I'll show you why in a moment. But the chrome's in absolutely perfect shape. We just want to clean it up a bit with some chrome polish. Okay, we are using brand new reproduction decals, and these came from BMX Products in Australia. So I had been waiting on these. It took a few weeks to show up. Uh, we are going to be peeling off the what's remaining of the original decals is just those two. Originally this had the gold decals on it, uh, which are great, but I've done so many gold bikes. Really want to do the blue, so I'm going to be doing that. Let's talk about some of the parts. Amy Grips, of course, because Amy's just been such a rad partner to work with. They've been around forever and their grips are some of the best in the BMX space. Uh, we have a Suntour style blue stem, Diacomp brake cable, which is going to go with the Diacomp brakes, I'll show you in a minute, a unlabeled, unbranded drop down, drop nose, blue BMX seat, silver, uh, I'm sorry, chrome rails and chrome guts. Then we have some brake lever covers in blue and blue anodized Pro BMX three piece cranks from Australia that came with a sealed American bottom bracket in blue anodized and it also came with the MKS blue pedals. It was basically a set that they were selling. A blue MX die comp seat post clamp and then we talked about brakes. Old school die comp side pull brakes. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be doing the chrome and blue chain. I have a chrome and black also, but probably chrome and blue. And then a fluted old school BMX seat post. And then we have some basic brand new chrome BMX handlebars. And then here's the crown jewel, the icing on the cake. These beautiful rims from Bassett and their Technique wheels. And I went ahead and did a holographic silver rim strip inside there that matches the Diamondback decals. And I put some blue axle nuts on there, blue Comp 3 style tires, and this wheel set is absolutely gorgeous. Even a blue acorn valve stem cap. So amazing blue wheels. And as I pull out, you can see all of the blue parts. Pretty much everything I can buy was blue because I want this bike to be nothing but chrome and blue. And I think the balance here is really good. So the first thing we need to do is pop out this headset because we have a beautiful Tongi sealed headset to replace it with and pop out these bearing cups to replace it with these. All right, I got all the bearing cups knocked out and I found this little Easter egg, original decals on the forks and I'm gonna leave those on there um, even though they're gold. You're not going to see this, it's just hidden inside the head tube. If 
but I thought it was kind of rad. And I have to mention also, when you're building these bikes, you do not need to use the amount of grease that I pulled out of these bottom brackets and head tubes. So calm it down with the amount of grease. I'm gonna go ahead and use the bike stand to strip the decals and polish the frame because it's just a little easier on you so you're not hunched over and you know destroying yourself over this. So it's easier to polish while it sits in the stand and peel decals, so on and so forth. So let's get to work. decals I think it looks really good so somebody asked me and these are great questions in the last video uh, or the one before that where I did decals does the razor blade scratch the chrome and that's a great question no it does not just don't push so hard because if you use that gooby gone or whatever the spray was I just used um, and let it sit for a minute it should just take off the rest of it you can lightly peel the decal off leaving the residue behind then spray and wipe with that stuff I use and it comes right off. Also recommend going over the entire bike and get rid of any residue, anything on there and it just comes out so nice and so clean. So what are we gonna do now? Answer another question, what polish do I use? I use Blue Magic Metal Polish Cream for Chrome and then I just do a go over on this and it should bring it right back to life looking as new as you can from 1983. Then we'll clean it off with some Windex, make sure with a microfiber towel it's perfect, and then put the new decals on. Okay, 15 minutes later, and look at the show quality chrome on this bike. It was already in really excellent condition, but now I'd give it probably a 9 out of 10. Probably one of the cleanest used 83 Diamondbacks in chrome that I've ever seen. It cleaned up so nice, very happy with it. Now we get to finally get to building. First thing I do, bearing cups. So headset and bottom bracket going in next. All right, full disclosure, I never hide anything from you guys, so no problem putting the headset on, no problem putting the bottom bracket on, but the seat posts, these come longer on purpose, so I had to take a cutter and cut off a section of the seat post because honestly the length would have probably went all the way to the bottom and the seat post would not go freely all the way to the bottom and I never want a seat post to be stuck in a frame. So now it slides in, slides out, should have plenty of space and room to put the seat on where I want it, which is about right there. So there's that so far. Now I think we'll go ahead and put our stem, bars, grips and brakes on. Hey, real quick, don't leave a whole lot of gap right there. That stem should sit down nice and low so it's stronger. There are people out there that run these stems with like this much chrome showing on that 
And you don't want to do that because you're risking one, it coming out, two, it breaking or bending. So lower your stem down in there. Don't be that guy. You don't want it sticking out and coming off. Okay, here we are with the Diacomp MX lever. I put the lever cover on it, ran the Diacomp brake cable all the way down across the top tube and down into the Diacomp 890 rear brake. Now something I want to show you on this Diamondback, the brake bridge has a flat mount point on top and a half circle or round mount point on bottom. So I used some blue axle washers, which is a little trick you can do. So I can mount it to the flat part, then I put one of the half circle washers on the bottom of the brake bridge, and then a flat blue axle washer on top. Just kind of a custom look, but still having that flat surface and the matching blue. Now, what are you noticing so far? 50 shades of blue, right? They're all pretty close, but they're all a little off. And when you work with lots of blues or lots of golds, that's just part of the territory. Different manufacturers, different products, rubber versus plastic versus aluminum and so on and so forth. So there are gonna be some different shades, but I think overall, we're still gonna pull it off. Now we have these cranks and pedals and chain. The cranks came, the bottom bracket came with these bolts. But the crank set came with these bolts, which are really nice. So when we get the cranks fitted on to the bottom bracket, I'll decide which ones are best. I'm hoping these, because the blue anodized and the chrome, will be the right ones for it. But you never know until you get it all on there. And then the blue decals. That looks so good. So excited about that. Now let's just keep going. I think. Now let's go ahead and put the wheels on because I just can't wait. I want to see the wheels on there and then we can get this high enough to get the cranks on and then we'll do decals last with a reveal. Okay, we have the bottom bracket and cranks on and in order to align the front spot rocket with the free wheel, we have to flip the chain ring to the other side of the spider. So this is made for that, it's not a big deal. But when it came, it came on the outside and the alignment was off. Even though I've shifted this crank on the spindle over, it still was not properly aligned. So no big deal. You flip the chain ring to the other side, tighten it back down, good as new, and now it should align with the free wheel. So now what we're gonna do is finish the bike up, put some decals on it, a chain, and then do the reveal. Okay, and there it is. You saw it without pads, and then you saw it with pads and a number plate. I need you to do me a favor right now. Comment down below. Which version did you like? Bare naked without anything or all raced up with a number plate and flight pads? I don't know, I can't decide. I kinda like both versions. The nice and clean looks always cool, but I put a lot of pads and number plates on my bikes, and I really like the extra touches that it gives it the donuts, all of that is just a little bit extra that I prefer on my builds. So help me decide, comment down below. Also, 
I'm keeping this one for a while, so don't even bother asking. You know where to find them when they're for sale. That's right, at radbmxbuilds.com. It is the only place I sell bikes. If you wanna go to the Instagram to see other content and photos, that's rad underscore bmx underscore builds. I appreciate it if you go over there, give a follow or even a subscribe. If you are on the website, there's lots of things to check out there too, including merch. If you wanna buy hats, shirts, hoodies, stickers, I would appreciate your business over at radbmxbuilds.com. Okay, don't forget, September 20th through the 22nd, the BMX Hall of Fame event going on in Tulsa, Oklahoma. If you're able to make it over there, please come over and say hello. I love seeing you guys hanging out, talking, getting a photo, whatever you wanna do. Maybe you'll end up in the next YouTube video. Thanks again for watching this one, and as always, stay rad.